is uh, with children and others who are struggling with reading, struggling readers. Well, first of all, uh, this, is, there's a, this is an acronym, POSSUM, you know, something. And uh, first of all, we need to, uh, first of all, we need to teach the sound system of the language, the, what we call phonology, which is sounds. And that we do by looking at individual sounds in isolation, making, stu making children and others who are learning, including adults, aware of sounds and the sound structure of the language, and then the visual recognition of letters. And coding them, making that alphabetic code uh, principle stick, knowing that <coughs> SH says SH, O says AH, and P says P. We blend them all together and we get SH, AH, SHOP. That's very key. That's necessary, but it's not sufficient. We also have to work very hard on teaching vocabulary, the meanings of words, the meanings of language, and uh, research uh, people like Isabel Beck and others have really done a lot of work in this area. Those of you who teach probably have, you know, have noticed that there's an increased emphasis on teaching vocabulary, that we don't teach it as just some sort of extra, you know, um, uh, orphan child off to the side that we really need to embed instruction from words that are within the, within the text that we're doing. Syntax, how words combine in connected text. The fact that there are subjects and verbs and, and uh, sentences versus paragraphs. And one of the uh, great disadvantages that uh, people with dyslexia have in even very, very bright people who go on to higher levels of education is they have a harder time with comprehension because the further up you go in school, by the time you get to college, high school, college, graduate school, Academic writing is, is rife with dependent clauses and all kinds of you know, long, long sentences. And it really, it really challenges somebody who has been reading much simpler sentences. So, you know, so we, um, I know we here at Groves use the Kansas uh, writing strategies a lot, and one of the best things about them is they have a sentence writing strategy, which teaches very carefully basic sentences, compound, compound complex, etc. cetera. And uh, it's, it's, it's the nearest thing I've, um, I've seen to diagramming sentences. How many of you are old enough? To, are any of you old enough to remember diagram? Yeah. Yeah, diagramming sentences. Like it? You didn't like it. Well, it's been very helpful now helping my kids. <laughs> I loved it. I love diagramming sentences. I couldn't tell any of my friends because they all hated it, but I loved it. I often think, you know, when I'm around a bunch of reading teachers and things, we all find out after a while that we just love diagramming sentences. And office supply stores. <laughs> and office supply stores without spending way too much money. It's terrible. Um, and, uh, and things like that. So sticky notes, oh, <laughs> colored ones, it's great. Um, and, then, and then the other, the other thing that the M in possum is the morphemes, in other words, root words. Because English is a morphophonetic language, which means it's not just transparent like Italian, where there's one sound for one symbol uh, and it's much clearer. Ours is very complicated, messy language made up of several languages, you know, three or four languages, and it screws up spelling and all kinds of other things. So phonemic awareness, phonology. Um, here we use the Wilson reading system, which is one of, uh, of a number of really good scientifically based reading programs. One of the first things when you're teaching someone to read is to really get those sounds very clear. So we do 
quick drills, sound drills with with letters, keyword sounds, A, apple, A, and we really draw them out so it's A, not A, apple, A, because that kind of swallows up the vowel. Kids will do that. Right, Chrissy? <laughs> <clears throat> so that's a part of phonemic awareness, and then we teach very uh, three sound words, which are the simplest words in the English language with short vowels, and then we tap them to segment the sounds and uh, blend them together again using you know our fingers, tactile, top, t, op, top. Have you guys seen your kids do that who go to groves or? Yeah, no, yes, no. No, oh, in seventh grade. Well, they're doing yes. it. They're doing it in just. Still it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're doing it. They're doing. They're doing the just words program, which mm -hmm. definitely. And I've been in all their classrooms and made them all tap, so I know it's happening. <laughs> so anyway, um, so that's one part. Then we've got to the the orthographic part, which refers to letters and print and so on. They have to understand that there are letter patterns. Um, and that certain letters go together and others don't. Like we have consonant digraphs where two letters make one sound. And so whenever you see an S and an H together, it's not going to say S. It's going to say SH and so on. Uh, as opposed to other combinations of uh, of letters which will each which will be consonant blends and then we instead of like uh, ship now once you change that out and you've got S L I P now still there are four letters but now there are four sounds they have to know that you know and be able to recognize that. And, um, you know, again, some children uh, are, have, a you know, have a much easier time recognizing that. But that is something we have to teach very explicitly. And to tell you the truth, most children should be taught that very explicitly. They probably don't need as many repetitions as some of our kids with dyslexia or other reading struggles do. But they certainly need uh, they certainly need some instruction. And letter formation is really important for sound symbol mapping. And what has not been taught, or what has sort of, uh, what has faded out of curricula, early childhood, early elementary curricula, handwriting. <coughs> do, they, do you teach handwriting, those of you who are teachers? A lot? I do. You do? Okay. Like? Cursive. Cursive. Okay. Do they, do, do, do they get taught manuscript too? In earlier grades. Earlier grades. Okay. Great. Our district just put it back in. Uh, because it was out and it was horrible. Yeah. You it just was, get horrible. It was terrible. So it, they actually I know. purchased something. So mm -hmm. they do it. Good. They it. Good. Does your district do foundations? Too bad, because foundations integrates handwriting with sound, with phonemic awareness and sound symbol. It's great, um, and it really, it really, you get kids who actually read their writing and things. Yeah, I had a, a student. I used to work at, uh, I used to teach at Landmark College in Putney, Vermont. Landmark College, you may not be aware, of, but it is a small college in uh, that was was founded specifically for uh, bright students with learning disabilities who wanted to go to college. And so uh, I actually spent 12 years there uh, in between the time I would talk here and now. And I remember one of my students, uh, one of the students I had <coughs> and, uh, who was very bright and 
actually did quite well there and managed to graduate and go on to Augsburg here, actually. Um, his parents came for Parents Weekend, and I saw his father who <laughs> said, said to me, he's, okay, he's like 20 now, right? Maybe 21 even. And because uh, he's failed out of college and, you know, things have been kind of, he said, you know, if he could just learn to hand, with his handwriting, if he could just read his own handwriting, all of this would disappear, you know, ADHD and so on. I don't think so. But anyway, um, so he said, can't you teach him?